Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of The Hand of Merlin. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today. As we go to there, will I have enough food? I will have enough food, this is fantastic. We're, do we're, do we're doing really well with food, and I am very happy for that. Although you have been traveling through dry and sun-scorched lands so far, your journey leads you and uh, the, to a river. You have seen broader streams in Albion and the Marca Hispanica, but this one flows swiftly and appears too deep to cross on foot. The road ends at the bank, cut off sharply as though with a knife, and you see the remains of a bridge poking out from the frothing waters. A little ways upstream, you see a boat drawn up on the shore, and a small group of people gathered around it. And uh, we can look for a ford, or we could just go to the boat. Let's go to the boat. It's probably, hmm, we need to pay for that. That's a bit of a problem. Ah, well. A group of road-weary people are standing near the boat, arguing with a stout fisherman of maybe 30 years. For the last time, he growls as you approach, I will not take you across. The current is too swift and my life too precious to risk it for what measly food you offer. There's a crossing a few miles east and you might try your luck there. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go to the crossing. As the fisherman said, there is a ford a few miles to the east where you manage to cross the river with ease, losing the comfort of dry boots and precious time. It's not precious. It's I like it. It's fine. Totally fine. We don't we don't mind corruption. As the sun sets over Al Andalus, you join another group of travelers around a small fire. They are exhausted and seem deeply melancholic. Perhaps a cheerful tale would lift their spirits, but who would be best suited to tell such a tale? Cheerful tale. I'm going to say Wilfred. That's his face right there, right? Yes. A cheerful tale, Wilfred says hesitantly. I suppose I can tell you the story of Sir Daniel, the strange Frankish man who claimed to be a knight of the round table, though no one had ever heard of him, and who said his greatest nemesis was an evil dwarf called Juram. I suspect the fair folk may have played a trick on him. The tale is amusing enough and passes the time. And we get food for that. That's amazing. The other travelers, grateful for the distraction from their worries, offer to share their food with you. Then they give me three days rations, which is great. In a small hamlet, you hear tell of a healer who has set up shop on the outskirts. As you pass the location on your way out of town, you see a small pavilion. Two servants, no doubt the attendants of the healer, sit outside in the shade of a tree. But perhaps owing to the late hour of the day, no one is waiting to have their ills seen to. Inside sits an old man writing in a large leather-bound book. We're going to talk to him, obviously. Ah, well met, the old man says, closing the tome setting and setting aside his quill. My name is Tahir al kafith a healer and seeker of knowledge. If you have come to have your ailments treated, you have come to the right place. If not, I kindly ask you to state your business or be on your way, as I was about to set down some of my thoughts on matters of healing and would rather not be disturbed. I can ask him about his research. Interested, Romila asks about Tahir's research. How kind of you to ask, Tahir sighs. I was writing an account of the ailments that I have encountered in my travels, and my insights on how to heal them, but just this morning I had a patient with cataracts, and the matter will not let me rest. I swear I read a cure, but I cannot remember where. Then it is indeed lucky that we have met, Romila exclaims, for I know of which text you speak. It is the Dahal al ahil hmm? Dah da Dahal potentially pronounced in other ways, many, many ways. Al Ain by Masai Masawai. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask him for healing because I might as well. And there it is. Gladly, my friends, Tahir smiles broadly. But since you have done me a great service in aiding my research, the least I can do is to offer my services for free. Please come, sit, and show me the, what ails you. And he indicates his own chair and steps aside, waiting for you to sit. And we're going to let him treat me. Which grants me two heal health points for Zahra, I believe. Which uh, I don't think matters. Let's move on. No, we're already here. So instead of going to Astorga, we're going to go to the Corrupted Node over there. Hopefully getting things in the process. Because, the, yeah. Before you, a field of poison flowers is grown. Although to call these stinking, twisted growths flowers is an insult to nature, capital N. They are rather like a detestable parody of flowers. But your dilemma is this. To cross the fields would be fast and save you much time. To go around would be slow, but preserve your health. 
Uh, well, this is the waste of time. Is what it is. I thought I was going to fight things. Yeah. The city of Astorga has a curious history. Once known as Asturica Augusta, it was nearly destroyed in the war between Emperor Lucius and Abd al-Rahman I, before the former was overthrown by Arthur. Then it was left abandoned for years, and the land became known as the Desert of the Duero. It was only under the Lordship... Oh, that's the river. The Desert of the Duero. That's the... I'm pretty sure that's the, the river. Because uh, it is similar to the name in Portuguese. So yeah, it's got it's got to be the the there's two big rivers that cross the uh, the peninsula. The it's the Duero and the Tejo potentially in Spanish. Um and um I'm saying the Spanish names without actually knowing them. Uh, the the term Duero comes from uh is it a Visigoth term? I think it is a Visigoth term. Uh, it is most likely that it comes from a Visigoth term that means water. Just as many rivers <laughs> are called water in their local languages. Uh, although it sounds like it is made of um, gold. It, it's, it sounds like the uh, sort of the, the way to say in Spanish and in Portuguese, Portuguese both uh, that it's made of gold. The, the river is mostly green, though, because it's, it's at least here in Portugal, it's pretty high uh, uh, sort of... Um, what's the word for the land right next to the river? Banks? Yeah. Pretty high banks, full of vegetation. Not very high trees necessarily, but it has a bunch of vegetation, so it reflects the green a lot. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's got nothing to do with the gold. It's just a, an old name for water. It was only under the lordship of Yashkar al-Ashtorji, known in the north as Esturgant, the exile, who was born in the city before its demise, that it was repopulated. It was only repopulated... Uh, with the lordship of Yashkar. That's that's what it means. That's a big sentence all upside down, and I had trouble cold reading it. I'm going to enter Astorga. Al Astorgi has transformed this small but proud city into a fort. The old Roman walls have been reinforced, and the soldiers are everywhere. There is a feeling of quiet defiance in the air. And uh, we're going to re uh, request an audience with Al Astorgi. Let's go with that. Al Astorgi is pleased to receive the heroes of Ronsovo Pass. Word of your exploits has reached us even here in Astorga, he says. Without you, surely everyone in Saragossa would have died. I wish I had a gift to offer you, but my coffers are empty. Believe me, however, when I say that I shall praise your names to the day I die. And I'm going to thank him, and that's bad, because he laughs. Don't thank me, please. The battles you have fought make my own look my own look like child's play. I should be showering you in treasure and preparing feasts and celebrations for you. Yes, you, yes, you should, because uh, we're going to need to go to the marketplace. The market square is small. There are only a few shops and stalls, though all are near neatly kept, and we can't upgrade anything. This is a this is a, a, a this run just does not have. I can't even buy supplies. At least I have the circlet, circlet of gold. Uh, these are more worth more, aren't they? Now, this late in the game. I mean, it's pretty good because I need that. Uh, so, do I want... Do I want to throw... No, I don't want to throw away the caustic vial. I want to sell this. Proceed. Leave the area. Go to the supplies. Buy a couple. And that's it. It's quite unfortunate. It's quite unfortunate where we are. And, uh, but that's it. Yeah, Alar Star, he has transformed his small but proud city into a fort. Uh, we're gonna retire for the day. You retire to the nearest inn to gather your strength for the journey ahead. And we are going to the unusual temple over there and potentially to the regular node. There's a heroic node on the other side. There is another one over here. So we're not going there, we're going over here. And, uh, on this side, we d it doesn't matter. The, the, where we go. So let's go this way. You arrive at a lake so vast that for a moment you wonder if you have already reached the Mediterranean coast. The, distant, distantly, you can make out an island in the middle of the lake and buildings upon it, but it is too far to make out any detail. Do you wish me to take you across? A man calls cheerfully from a boat that is moored at a small jetty. I was going anyway and wouldn't mind the company. Yeah, let's visit the island. The island is rocky and almost devoid of vegetation. In its center stands a tall structure, ruined now, but once a splendid castle. They say that place is haunted, the fisherman says before casting off. I wouldn't go near it, were I you. 
If you need passage back, I'll uh, be over by the rocks. There is good fishing here. And just like that, you are alone on this foreboding piece of land. And of course, we're gonna... Let's look around the island. Ooh. Avoiding the castle like your guide suggested, you wander around the island for a while, finding a large pomegranate tree at the... or pronounced properly, because I don't think I did... Uh, at the shore, in the shadows of the castle's crumbling tower. The fruit is plentiful and ripe for the picking, and you are in the process of taking as much as you can when the sound of shifting rubble and skittering claws from within the nearby structure alerts you to the presence of abominations. That is all one sentence from there to there. Fortunately, English is a little bit lax with the comas, and it does work without them. But I like I like comas. Get me all the comas forever. Just just get comas in your texts. Although this this game is actually for an early access game, it, it's the the writing is pretty bang on all things considered. So uh, we are gonna want to be right there. Mm, maybe we have a cockatrice. We have two cockatrices. Cockatry. Cockatry? Could try a person. That's the words. For sure. Definitely. N no doubt about it. Um, with, the, with the other things that I added as well, just for effect. That's definitely how it's pronounced. The, the plural version, I mean. Uh, that's a watched on. That one, that's not a big deal. That is a big deal. That is a bigger deal. It would uh, it would be fantastic. I should have I should have used th this doesn't this doesn't apply to her. Yeah, or does it? Maybe it does. No, it does. Does it? I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going over there. We're gonna destroy these. Uh, with the uh, with the thing, uh, let's uh, so we move and then we do that. It sounds like a plan, but so you're watched over there. Yeah, let's do it for you. Caustic weaponry can be here. That's reasonable better than than pushing forward and then doing seven damage each that's all right they'll pierce and they're burning which is pretty important and then you can move over here that is not great that is not great um no nah, maybe it is i mean it isn't Anyway, this guy needs a shot in the face. And uh, can we shoot from there? We cannot. But if I do that, I will be able to. What what do these do? They don't do anything when they when they die. Okay. Okay, that's a lot of damage there. And we should do this. The sooner the better. Then I do that. That is an all right amount of damage. This doesn't reach pretty much anyone. Uh, and I'm going to need to heal your your uh, armor. But that's the good thing about this, is that as long as it's Zahra taking damage, I'm good with that. Command? No. Repost. Okay. I kind of want to get the shield block right away. But, do I want to move? Let's see. Repost is... Moves or attacks. Yeah, I, don't, I do want to move. It is better than the defense. Because we can live with the damage. Oh, and that's a kill! Oh, then I might as well... How is that a kill? Oh, yeah, because you're marked. Let's go for it. Yeah, that move was, was definitely worth it. Because otherwise it wouldn't have worked. And it works for both of them as well. Okay, a little bit of, oh yeah. And also she uh How did you not get her oh I, I don't know how you got her repost. Also she heals her armor every time she kills somebody. I forgot about that. I never know why that happens. 
when hitting an unarmed foe for the first time, deal two extra and restore 50% maximum armor in armor points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's not yeah yeah that's that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep yeah, for sure for sure for sure that's what's yep. Uh, what do I want with you? I want well I want you to move forward, most likely. What do you do, Red Cap? Who's the the one? Who's the one? Who's the one that's doing the preparing? It's the cockatrice, right? Makes sense that it would be. So we will want to sh to attack that. Right? But... Is it better... To attack with you first? Also... Roland's Horn... Yeah, might as well. I never use that. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Go for it. Still don't fully understand how it's calculated, but... For sure. So that thing is gonna die, right? <laughs> that thing is gonna die. How are you dealing that much damage? <laughs> what is that? How is that taking... So it's vulnerable. Plus two damage from all sources. It's burning. I don't... I don't get it. Oh, it lied to me. Or maybe it didn't, maybe... Well, it died. So I don't, I don't know if it lied to me or not. But I like what I saw. Okay. I don't know what these orders are anymore. They look better, but better is worse. Make them look ugly as sin, and that way I can play with them, honestly, because I don't know what that means. I don't know what that aura means. Okay, and then you're gonna want to... It doesn't matter right now. Uh, that was health damage. No, it was not. Okay, move over here. It's gonna do a little bit of damage. That is a tremendous amount. Or at least it seemed like it was a tremendous amount. That's a kill. Okay. It's pretty good. Experience. We are far away from level. Well, not far away. That's precisely what I mean. We're not far away from leveling up. Let's see what this one gives us. After traveling along the shore of a large lake for several hours, you come to a town. Before the cataclysm, this might have been a place of beauty. But now you are greeted by nothing but empty windows and gaping doors. As the sun sets, you stand on the village square and take in the devastation around you. Nary a building is left intact, and those that aren't outright collapsed show signs of a recent fire. And we're going to search the buildings, because of course we are. The buildings surrounding the square are too damaged to enter safely. But venturing closer to the lakeshore, you discover a small hut that has survived the assault relatively intact. Entering, you find a modest dwelling. The table has been set for dinner, with food laid out, waiting for someone who will never come home. Whoever lived here left in a hurry, and you can only hope that they got out of town unharmed when the abominations came. And we're, gonna, we're not going to take a food, unfortunately. The sun is set now, bathing the lake in darkness. As your eyes adjust to the gloom, you become aware of skittering movement in the empty streets. It seems that the town is not as deserted as you had thought, but the beings that inhabit it are not, uh, are not born of this world. And I also noticed that there's a space before each, um, each uh, paragraph. Both here and in the previous page that happened. What is that? Oh. Cool, cool. Uh, both here and the previous uh, previous page. I don't know what that is. I, I do know that it's very easy to just... It's, it's very easy to fix this without actually having to fix the original text files. Because if this is just a matter of, you know, inserting... Inserting plain text is complicated, so people usually don't work with that. And so, or working with plain text, I should say. And so they work with rich text, like in Word or something like that. And so when they copy it to a program, a lot of little artifacts appear that might not show up on Word. Uh, and so the better way to do it is programmatically. Every time you, you basically trim. Trim your freaking things. It's good. It's good to do that. Good practice. But good, that's what I do in my websites. This isn't a website, but, it, you know, games interface is basically the same thing. Except for, you know, being a lot harder to do. And program. So, what are we dealing with? We have a cockatrice, we have a vivern, a mandrak, and another vivern. Okay. I don't like any of that. Uh, so, 
Mm, are we surrounded? We are also surrounded. That might be a good thing. That might be a good thing. Because right away we have the alcoholic elixir. Okay. And then I can go over there and smack them in the face. With great force. Let's see. Speaking of force. Power is actually really rubbish. So I would like to give you the power. I thought that was a misclick, honestly. I thought I had given the power to the, the floor. Wouldn't put it past the game to do that, to allow me to do the, those things, but the game has shown that it, it doesn't do that. Uh, I want to pay attention. On death, deal seven damage to enemies in melee range. Okay, that's that's fine enough. Uh, yeah, we're going to need this right away, because you're going to be exposed. This would be also pretty nice. Instead of the shield. It's on track. Being hype. Hmm. Well, uh, let's let's first observe where we're going. Because we're going through the... Oh, you can go through... Okay, that's not bad at all. Uh, let's just bring you over here. So, you do the shouting. Uh, it doesn't work. I noticed that in the previous fight. It doesn't make them powerful. I, I, I don't know what to say. I think it's broken. I honestly think it's broken. But then again, so is the damage count of everything. So, what do I know, right? What do I know? Okay, that's a little bit of evading. That's a little bit of damage. This uses... It doesn't use action points. Oh, look at you having a, an actual aura. Okay, that's good. And uh, that, that's good because she's going to get keen when she gets hit. Or hopefully she's going to get keen. Because we are definitely going to get hit. And then you're not going to do anything. Uh, we're just going to move you anywhere, really. Okay, these guys are going to take a little while to move. That is a kill. Deal 7 health damage. I did not, did not like that. And that is a keen. Keen is powerful. Uh, do you have extra move? You do not. So we want to burn you. Do you have, like, those nasty things where you attack when you take health damage or something? No, you're just getting evasion. That's pretty decent. Let's go for it. Veal, veal per pierced, burning, and a bunch of other nice things. Uh, that's gonna kill you. I like that. Let's go with it. Okay, so you're toast. And then we're gonna give you... A l How did you... No, you didn't recover health. Let's just move you over here. Uh, that's good enough. And then I can give you this. You didn't get kin. Kin? Not kin. It's a different thing altogether. Let's move you right there. Oh, no. I didn't realize. I forgot. That's pretty good. And the shriek is less good. Also, past turn. <laughs> smart one. Real smart one. Okay, let's uh, give it another try. Because, I mean, we can. Let's see, what can you do? You can move over here. That wasn't ideal, but I can do this. Powerful only to herself. I, I don't understand. I don't understand anything. How did that one die with one hit? I don't get it. I think the game is, is extremely confused. <laughs> it might be the fact that, you know, multiple builds and whatnot. But I'm pretty sure there's there's some real shenanigans going on right now. We all get keen. You're toast. You're absolute toast. Which is the best kind of toast, as we well know. Let's do that. That one has charges, right? No, he doesn't. Good. And death. And a level up as well. 
Okay. Let's see if we fix this. Uh, let's see. First that. Oh no, it's the bad level up. Shield block over here gains stacks of raised shields, which makes you immune to ranged damage. This one uh, restores armor. Hmm. Uh, honestly, making you immune to ranged damage might be a good thing. Let's go with that. And as for you... Move to target location, applying three stacks of dazed. Um, two enemies adjacent to the starting tile. Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. On arrival, gains three stacks of evasion, evasion instead of two. And uh, this one is move farther. The dazed is minus accuracy, minus evasion. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Let's go with that. It's very contextual, but might like it. And then we have the... Oh, it changes from alcoholic to choleric or to... Uh, the sanguinic or sanguine sanguine probably so this applies three quick two stacks of keen and reduces uh which is good because that's, that's good and reduces all cooldowns by one applies three quick expires all debuffs and reduces all cooldowns by one uh nope i want to choleric one there we go pretty good let's go to the unusual temple in the next episode because for right now i'm curl rpg and this has been the hand of merlin i really hope you've enjoyed it and if you did go ahead and leave a comment like the video but above all thank you so much for watching and i hope i'll see you next episode bye bye